Welcome to Decades of Design, where we explore the major interior design trends of the past and how they influence the way we design today. Today, we're diving into the 1900s and 1910s and the lavish Art Nouveau movement. We'll talk about the good, the bad, and how you can bring this iconic style into your space today. So, let's set the stage. The early 1900s were part of the Belle Epoque, or the Beautiful Era, a time of cultural, artistic, and social flourishing across Europe. This period was defined by optimism, new technologies, and prosperity. With all of this going on, it's no surprise that the arts, including interior design, were booming. Art Nouveau, the major design movement of this era, was a reaction against the rigid, formal structures of the 19th century. It was all about breaking away from historical imitation and creating something new, something modern, but still beautiful. Designers wanted to elevate craftsmanship, blending functionality and creativity in a way that hadn't been done before. So, what does Art Nouveau look like? Art Nouveau is famous for its sinuous, undulating lines, what's often called the whiplash curve. Here's a quick rundown of some key motifs. Think plant-like forms, abstracted florals, delicate female figures, peacocks, insect wings, and feathers. Floral designs like poppies, wisteria, and water lilies, S-curves and those signature whiplash lines, vines, and shells. As for color schemes, you're looking at muted pastels, soft whites, sage greens, lilacs, and browns. Think of these colors blended with natural textures and materials like stained glass, ironwork, and carved wood. One of the best known contributors to the Art Nouveau movement is Louis Comfort Tiffany. He revolutionized glass making with his copper foil technique, which let him fuse tiny pieces of glass into intricate three-dimensional forms. If you've ever seen a Tiffany lamp, you'll know the kind of intricate beauty I'm talking about. I saw his stained glass piece, Autumn Landscape, at the Metropolitan Museum in New York City, and it was truly stunning. Another name you've likely heard is Antony Gaudi, the Spanish architect who took Art Nouveau to its most flamboyant extremes. The Art Nouveau movement in Catalonia is known as Modernisme, or Modernism in Catalan. His buildings in Barcelona, like the ones in Parc Güell, feature vibrant organic mosaics made from shards of ceramics and glass. His work really embodies the over-the-top nature of the movement, where every small detail is part of a larger artistic vision. Now, while Art Nouveau has left its mark on history, it's not as common in modern design, at least not in the way you might think. In fact, when I was researching for this video, I found that it showed up more in fantasy films than it does in our homes today. You can find its influence in films like Lord of the Rings because of its whimsical, ethereal qualities that are perfect for an otherworldly feel. But if you want to bring a touch of Art Nouveau into your own space, you can. It's all about looking for those small, intricate details, finding those pieces that really capture certain elements of the movement. Look for Tiffany-style lamps like the one behind me here. This one I found on Facebook Marketplace for relatively cheap. While it's not an original Tiffany lamp, which goes for thousands, it's still of the, of the style of the... In addition to the Tiffany lamps, you can look for stained glass accents or wallpaper with those stylized floral patterns. Furniture might be a little trickier to source. Because Art Nouveau is all about hand craftsmanship, so mass-produced pieces are very rare and any pieces that you do find will retail for thousands and thousands of dollars. But you can still find replicas or items inspired by the era. In terms of how some of these ideas are, are showing up today, I've seen a rise in handmade decor in the last few months and years as people find ways to customize their own spaces. Trends like mosaic tables are very much in line with the mosaic benches that Gaudi designed. Additionally, stained glass artists like Katie Porman have revived the intricate stained glass work into modern designs. People are also coming up with creative ways to create stained glass using different types of glue. I recently added an Art Nouveau inspired wallpaper to my ironing closet. It's a peel and stick renter friendly wallpaper that had the floral and peacock motifs often seen in the Art Nouveau movement. Before we wrap up, let's acknowledge the darker side of this period. While the beautiful era was a time of great 
beauty for the wealthy, it was also a period of rising inequality. The poor lived in difficult conditions while the upper classes indulged in what some would describe as a fairy tale existence, retreating into lavish homes filled with Art Nouveau flair. It's a reminder that design history is never separate from the social realities of the time and is often directly influenced by it. In the end, Art Nouveau might not be the easiest style to recreate in a modern home, but its influence is undeniable. Its focus on craftsmanship and beauty and nature continues to inspire designers today. And who knows, maybe we'll see a revival of some of these forms in the years to come. Thank you for joining me on this series through the early 1900s and Art Nouveau. If you like this series, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Next time we'll dive into the 1920s, where we'll shift from the curves of Art Nouveau to the sleek lines of Art Deco. Until then, happy designing!